Compton Hospitals and Social Services Committee. So at this time, I'll read the first resolution. Resolution 2019-1549, sponsors Verger, Gilmore, and Withers. It approves the employment contract for the Chief Medical Director of the Metro Government of Nashville and Davidson County. I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, it's been moved and properly seconded. Is, are there any questions or comments? All right, then. So we're ready to take a vote. All in favor? All right, seeing none against, it is recommended to the full body. All right, we'll go to the next one, which is resolution 2019-1550, sponsors Virtue and Gilmore, accepts a grant from the Tennessee Department of Health to the Metro Board of Health to provide public health activities to enhance the health and well-being of women, infants, and families by improving community resources and service delivery system, systems available to them. I have a motion? Motion. Second. It's been moved and properly seconded. Is there any discussion? That's the fetal infant mortality review program. Are they look at this <coughs> see what systems need to be enhanced or improved to try to tamp those down. They've had a lot of success with sleep-related deaths. In fact, it's down close to 30 percent since they started. Oh, very good, very good. And are the numbers trending down in specific demographics as well? I know it tends to be higher towards... what you're looking at. I mean, you still have the overall death trends are down, but like a lot of things, we have that persistent, we have a persistent gap between mm -hmm. white residents and African... You know what I'm saying? African Americans yeah. is still not... It, it have tends to be, they're, they're both going down, but that they stay stubbornly apart. Mm -hmm. So have you guys noticed any differences or your department? Um, what what are the reasons for the gaps? Well, you look at a lot of the, the biggest issue for most of these is just premature birth, mm -hmm. low, really low birth weight babies. Um, and so you, when you back that up and start figuring out how you deal with that, it could be um, something to do with getting into uh, care yeah, early on in the first trimester, if mm -hmm. at all possible. Um, but, but I think as much as anything, what they realize is it has a lot to do with the preconception health of the mother. It has right. a lot to do with what kind of shape she's in physically, particularly if their pregnancies are too close together. Mm -hmm. um, and so they, they talk a lot about trying to make sure that women space pregnancies appropriately, make sure that they're in good physical condition before they before they get pregnant or start trying to get pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, like I say they're, they are, um, they're, they're making progress. Things are going in the right direction, but they, they do tend to be there. And, in, uh, and the infant mortality, is a, it just has this a gap that's been there. For, and they're, right. it's not getting much closer. They're going the right direction, but they're not getting together. Mm -hmm. Do you know what the, the difference is, like the percentage is in the gap? Is it like? Uh, they, they could tell you exactly what it looks like, but okay. I don't know. Mm -hmm. This is Kimberly Wyatt. Um, Kimberly. Deanna Allen Rob is the one who runs this. She went to White Shethrin. Right. She's at my area. I know, but she was working with this program. Um, I'm sorry, who was? Kimberly. Um, Not Weish Etheridge. Yes, right, Etheridge. Uh -huh. yeah. She was the she, one that. She was, yes. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> so I know she's been specifically uh, addressing those in um, the North Nashville community the, and those that are in poverty because it is from the fact that they've not taken care of their bodies, they're pregnant and not even knowing that they're pregnant and not eating and continuing to drink and, you know, abuse their bodies when they should not be. Okay. So are they younger or old? Are these younger? Younger. Younger, younger women. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, not necessarily. So, but they, they go interview the moms if they're, if they're willing Mm -hmm. and try to talk through exactly what Yeah, they had, I can't, it was another program that they had. I can't remember exactly the name of the mm -hmm. program, but it was specifically for those who were 25 and under who had two or three children that they were focused and try to help address some of those issues. Yeah. I can't remember the name of it, but I know they had reached out to me to try to help them identify some of those yeah. um, young ladies. Yeah, there, there are several programs that yeah. are around that area. 
So is it is it health care another issue as well? They don't have access to health care? Well, uh, any pregnant woman is eligible for ten care. Okay. Um, that's an automatic eligibility factor. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Another thing that they, they realized was that what used to happen is if they came into the health department and got a positive pregnancy test, um, we would give them a piece of paper, basically, that said you are presumptively eligible for 10 kids. This presumptive eligibility is good for 45 days so that they could start their um, their, their care. Right. Um, but it, as it transpired, a lot of doctors would not take that presumptive eligibility because too many of the women never got fully enrolled. And so it, they were finding themselves in a situation where if they took the presumptive eligibility and took on the new patient and they didn't finish enrolling in 10 care, that within 45 days they had an uninsured patient. And so they stopped taking the presumptive enrollment, a lot of them. And so we now have uh, trained application counselors at every, every site in the health department. And if a woman comes in and is pregnant, we immediately right there on the spot enroll her in 10 care so that she can get that's good. That's good. I was going to say, that seems like something that would, like, we focus on, we did, like, a thing for NES, like, the opt-in. It seems like that. But is that something at the state that they would have to do? Just to kind of opt them in versus, do you understand? You don't, you're automatically eligible, but you still have to go through all the paper process. process. Right. I got that part. I guess I was saying that if, if it was a way they could just fully sign them up, and it would have to be optional the other way. But even if, if they did that and they don't show, you're going to yeah. still have the same mm. kind of issue. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's been a consistent problem in finding women early enough to get them uh, into uh, right. care before the, in the first trimester yeah. particularly. And then I have one more question, and then I'll stop. It's just really interesting to me. Now, um, the trends for African Americans that are living in the city, they're moving more out of the city. Do they still have the same access to you guys? Have you noticed that? Uh, you know, I haven't asked them that. I, 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 it, it is an issue, certainly, there's a lot of displacement going on. Right. Um, that's one of the reasons we want to replace the Woodbine building and put it further towards the southeast where the clients actually live. Right. Mm -hmm. um, we've moved a little bit closer, we've moved a little bit further north, the Lentz building, so it's not further away from North Nashville, at least. Okay. Uh, the, the big gap, I think, is in the south southeast. Southeast. Okay, yeah, that's the two areas. It seems like the southeast, yeah. if you look at the census data, and the, the north. Is almost, it's just barely outside of 440. It's pretty far north. Okay. It's also falling down. Okay, and so when is that on, supposed to come online? <laughs> Whenever you guys find <laughs> it. <laughs> We've had a proposal in for about eight years. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah. I mean, these are things, and I think we'll look up on that since we realize it's an issue, right? Okay, so. And uh, you know, Woodbine has been working out of school forever. Mm -hmm. That's our busiest <coughs> So hopefully, okay, definitely. So hopefully the committee will remember that and the importance of that. And we're talking about infant mortality. So when that comes forward, we'll put something in our minds to remember that. Okay, so are we ready to vote? Yes. All in favor? Aye. All right, seeing none. Opposing, it is recommended to the committee for approval. And I will also um, make a little note. And if we can kind of just sign a letter as it relates to the budget for that, I think that's really important for the... Woodbine. Yes, Woodbine. Okay, I just want to make sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, but that Woodbine, that's going to be a big thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's going to be more, going to take more than just a letter. Mm -hmm. You know, with the, because they, they offer a lot of things over there at Woodbine. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, I think it does deserve more discussion. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We've been looking for a place. Um, General Services have been helping us look for a place to co-locate with the Metro Action Commission okay. uh, for a health uh, head, a head Start Center yeah. because there's a lot of uh, it's a lot of overlap between yeah. the, the clientele. But then, if you did that, then that would bring you back closer to north and downtown well, they, as they opposed to being. Direction. No, they want to go that way too. Oh really? Yeah. Oh okay. Yeah, and we're just saying that we support. Oh, them. so you all are just gonna. Uh, we were thinking we could do like integrate maybe and the parks do it together. It's not not giving up the headquarters where you are. No, no. Okay, no, this is specifically a Head Start location. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And I think we're just saying we're not making a recommendation for what building. We're just saying we definitely support a funding of a building right. and we want it to be a priority. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. Good deal. So, uh, resolution 2019-1551 sponsors Virtue and Gilmore, approves a grant from the Nashville Predators Foundation to the Metro Board of Health, Animal Care and Control to help support reduce pet adoption fees to reduce overcrowding. Map a motion. Motion. Second. Okay, it's been moved and properly seconded. Is there any discussion? The, uh, the, thank you to the Predators. They, uh, they just raised money for subsidized, basically subsidized adoptions. You know how much it was? I want to say $9,000 maybe. I'm not, it's something like mm -hmm. that. And so how do people get it? How do, if they want to they access it? They have events movie? where, I think, who, anybody, any Preds fans in here, who's number seven? Number seven? Oh, yeah. Seven. Do they have a number seven? Not sure. So the adoptions were $7.00. So they have seven dollar adoption tax. It's not. It's not. It's nine. And I was thinking it was because that was his number. Forsberg seven or nine? I thought, thought he was nine. Nine's Forsberg. Yeah. Right. So it's not him. At any rate, they, it's it's for to reduce adoption. Can't believe it on nine seven. That's okay. We got somebody on the case. It's, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that other guy, is it? Channel yeah. Four News working okay. for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So. We're going to take a vote. How many for? All right, seeing none against, it's recommended to the full body for approval. Madam Chair, did you guys vote on 1550? Yes, we did. Yeah, we just did. Yes. Did we miss you? Because I heard some discussion. I didn't hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, we yeah. voted. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Does Marvin want to talk on that? Mm -hmm. On what? The next one on 52. Yeah, he's the next one. Yeah. I was going to say, we went over 1550 pretty in Pretty thorough, depth. and we took a vote. Very thorough. Yeah. 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 We can take a vote now. Weber is number seven. Uh -oh. Okay. Uh -oh. Yannick Weber. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> He's been hurt. That's why we don't. Uh, oh, my God. Oh, yeah. That's how life is. I knew it. I knew you were on it. Yeah. Working for you. you. Yeah, and playing a while. Yeah. Okay, resolution 2019-1552, sponsors Vircher, Gilmore, and Bettany. It approves an amendment, one, to grant from the Tennessee Housing Development Agency to the Metro Action Commission for Low-Income Home Energy Assistance Program, services targeted toward the elderly, the disabled, veterans, and households with children under the ages of six. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. It's been moved and properly seconded. Is there some discussion? Uh, this is the, uh, at the last Health and Hospitals meeting, I talked about the funding that we will be getting. This is the $6.3 million in additional funding that we'll be able to assist persons with low income on their electric, their gas bill. And this was the 30000 estimated. Traditionally, we serve about 9000 uh, so we can serve over 30,000 persons oh, awesome. with, income, uh, with uh, their electric or their gas bill, even propane, just to whoever their energy supplier is. That's beautiful. Now, is it um, only Davidson County, or yeah. is Davidson this County is in for, other? for Davidson County. Specific. Now, there are counties around us. Mm -hmm. There's another community action agency that would serve them, but it's specifically for Davidson County. Okay, good to With the increase in the number of... Uh, uh, people you're able to serve, does that impact your um, income restrictions at all? No, th that's set. It is? That is set by Congress. So it was $19,000? Uh, uh, for one person, it's $18,210. dollars mm -hmm. 18210 yeah. And I've got, if the committee would it's like It's all that. or nothing, right? It's not any... Yes, it's done. gross. Right. It's before taxes. The point is, if, if they either meet it or they don't. Yes, right? that's correct. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I just want to add that Mr. Cox was able to come and meet with the group at uh, Streetworks today, mm -hmm. and many of them were looking forward to him coming, and they looking forward to him coming back next year because they were very excited and very um, uh, grateful for the assistance that he was able to provide for them. He also brought forms so they could sign up right on the spot. Mm -hmm. So I, did, I know that it is a great program, and we appreciate Metro Action for their diligence and maintaining Just to give you an idea. and increasing the funds. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We definitely do. 
Are you going to walk us through this real quick? Thank you for writing this sheet. Yeah, I can. Um, it's going to be household of one. Okay. Uh, it's going to be on your left, and then the gross amount is going to be on your right-hand side. So mm. based on the amount of people that are in your household, many people that think that it has to be past due or it's disconnected, we don't want that. We want people to be proactive right. in that they can get assistance. Let's say, for example, if they're approved for 350 and their bill is 125 they'll have a credit of $225 toward the next bill. Mm -hmm. And let's say the next bill is 125 then they still have $100. So that credit will roll on until they meet that requirement. Ooh, I like that. So that's the goal. But now if somebody comes in and they're disconnected or they're past due, we can still serve them. Right. But then there are people who are eligible who can get the services, but they won't come in because they say, well, somebody else can use it. Yeah. And this is because we're going to be shifting to a federal physical year as of October 1. So these funds have to be spent by September 30th, 2019. So that's why we've talked to uh, Metro General. We've talked to... Um, Metro Human Resources, there are some employees in Metro government that can meet it. We've also met with uh, MNPS, uh, looking at their staff, also looking at their families. So I feel like I'm a mayor of a small city, mm -hmm. you know, got to fund 30000 So mm -hmm. we're getting out doing partnership. We contact the WIC office, make sure we have applications for those young mothers over there as well. And I think we, Kobe, you had sent out some letters yes. the last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why uh, we're trying to get the information out because we know you have limited resources. What about MDHA? Yes, we've reached out to MDHA as well. Also, we're open if you have uh, uh, neighborhood meetings and you want us to come out and talk to folks in your neighborhood, we're open to that as right. well, doing some on site right. applications at those locations as well. Well, thank you so much. Now, I know you've been doing this for a couple of years now. Is the funding, though, going up or is it going down over the years? This is untraditional for us for the simple fact we're transitioning to a federal physical year. Next year, we could be back at $6.1 and that'll be the funding. But for this year, uh, you're exactly right. We've never had this amount of at, at this level. So we really need to help and get the word out, Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then I want to see, too, now the numbers for those who qualify, is it as many ha that have been in the past? I know that the numbers are increasing, but mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, with 18,000, who is living in the city? I know it might sound yeah. silly, but who is actually... Well, I can tell you some of my yeah. districts uh, qualify for that. Yeah. Right. Okay. Especially uh, those that are fixed example. income. Fixed income. Okay. okay. Social, Social security. Lady. Absolutely. It lives mm -hmm. right around the corner from me, whose husband died. Right. They bought their house 35 years ago, and he left her with no annuity, basically, mm -hmm. so she's living on her Social Security. Oh, Unfortunately, she has a place to live, mm -hmm. uh, That's uh, right. but it's a struggle for her to pay her property taxes. But, right. but but you have to also look at the fact that when you got more than well, that, 18000 is for one person. Person, right. But when you got several members of the household, that four people, right. and, they're, and it's 37650 so, you know, you look at a lot of single mothers who are working and they may make $30,000 a year, yeah. but they've got three kids. Mm -hmm. And we've even reached out to the Tennessee Hospitality Association where you got wow. people that are working in the Hotel. hospitality right. industry. Uh, hotel workers who would be eligible exactly. for programs like this as well. Exactly. So, yeah, you'd be surprised of the number of people who, there are some people who are, are struggling. Right. And they could use this, but because of pride or mm. they feel like they don't want any type of government assistance, they won't, they won't apply for and it. And also think about the, the grandmothers who are raising their uh, grandchildren. Children. Right. Because that, that, that's, that, quite a bit of that is, is Mm. Yeah, that, yeah, I just didn't know if the pressure person. from if they were still able to live in the city. Yeah. Like if, in Davis, if that makes any sense. Like it, if it you makes, look it at does. A, it makes I mean, sense. I know, it makes a lot of sense. Because you have dollars $80,000 dollars to right. live for the, yeah. But that's good to know. Thank you for giving us such good, good information. We'll Absolutely. use it. And to know that you have so much money, we're definitely going to try to make sure we get to all the people. So we're ready to take a vote. And just the FYI, the mayor's office is going to put it on their social media. But we're just getting everything passed by council as well. Wonderful. And I'd like to take a picture with you tonight and put it on them. I'll so put Mm -hmm. okay. If you don't mind, I really like to do that. Okay, so we're going to take a vote? Yep. All right. Thank you so much. This concludes our meeting. Thank you so much for being here. And it's recommended for approval. It's 5-4, and we'll recommend it to the general body. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you.